Now it's a party. What is up, Ferret Nation? It's me, Yemi the Ferret, here with another episode of YemiCast, a video game podcast now on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes. Thank you so much for coming around, showing up, and being here. I appreciate whatever platform you're listening on. I appreciate you. If you're here for the premiere on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. How are you doing today? How are you doing today, Mike? Uh, today we're going to be talking about Rage 2, SteamWorld Quest, Ghostbusters, um, Discord, Netflix, and more. So, uh, there wasn't, like, a lot of news today, so I kind of have a few things that are, like, not news, but more like, hey, I'm going to talk about my impressions of these things. Uh, so bear with me while I get my thoughts together, of course. But thank you so much for showing showing up. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. To all my Ferret Nation members, uh, welcome. So the first thing on today's agenda is Steam World Quest. Ba-ba! Steam World Quest ha- has taken my heart. It's taken my heart and my time because I've been playing it a lot lately. Steam World Quest is the next game in the Steam World series. It started off with a tower defense game, which I didn't know about, uh, and then it went to a Steam World dig game where you dig underground for gems and stuff. Then it went to a space game where you were in space, and it was called Steam World Heist. And then there was Steam World Dig Two, which built upon Steam World Dig One. And now there is Steam World Quest, which is a turn-based strategy game where you use cards from a deck to plan your attacks. It's super interesting and super fun. Like I haven't had this much fun with a with an indie game in a while now because a lot of indie games that come out nowadays they're either like grass simulator or something of that matter and this is a great change from the norm. Um, yes, there are a lot of great indie games that come out. Not all of them are for me, but this game is definitely definitely one that is on my list. I've been playing it a lot lately and nonstop, even more than the Defend Your Castle game that came out on the Switch, which I used to play as a Flash game on like stickfigure.com or whatever it was called. Um, so Steam World Quest, like I said, it's a turn-based game. It's in the world of Steam World. Um, the story is pretty much, um, you know, there's this ruthless villain that is invading the land, and you need to defend your 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 town, and then go on a, an adventure to 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 take him down. And that is pretty much it. So there's a lot of awesome and unique character designs in this game. Like all the enemies have pretty unique styles to them. Um, there's one boss that has like that he's like um, he has a shield and a sword. And he's like a robot with a wheel on the bottom, so he moves around really fast. And his head is a bird in a cage, and it's just, it's a, it's really funny. Um, not to mention the designs of the regular characters are really, really nice looking. Um, you start the game off with just a warrior and a mage, and you gradually get more robots that you can add to your team. Also, you get more cards and stuff like that to add to your deck. Each character base can only have eight unique cards to, to, to each individual, so you need to kind of pick and choose what you need because there are some cards that don't require any energy to use, and there's an energy, I should, I should start by saying this, there's an energy gauge at the top of the screen, and there's cogs, and as you do basic attacks that don't require energy, the cogs fill up, and they turn red, and depending on how many cogs you have is how many, what, what, how, what level of cards you can use. So there's anywhere from like one level, actually there's level zero ones all the way up to like level five or six. I, I don't know for sure yet how far they go. Um, but the highest one I've seen is four right now. And, you know, four is like a really powerful attack. And it takes a lot of steam to use. It takes a lot of energy to use. So that's why you kind of got to build it up gradually. Or you can, you know, uh, do combos and stuff like that to help build and stuff like that. it's it's really fun it's really unique um so if you do three of the of uh the same characters cards in a row they'll do a fourth special card that comes up only when you do three of them in a row so the one character all their cards are, are red they have red lining so if you use three red cards in a row no matter what they are you'll get a fourth one that does an extra extra move uh same thing with the mage and with the repair dude um really really cool and the the even though the dialogue isn't as good as I would say, like a SteamWorld Dig 2 or Heist, I still think the dialogue is pretty good. At times, it can be pretty funny. Uh, nothing is really read to you unless the narrator is speaking, but for the most part, you're kind of reading yourself and listening to the robots do their little psycho babble, whatever you want to call it, a uh, robot babble. Uh, 
I really enjoy it though. Like it's aesthetically, the graphics are pleasing. The look of the game is overall pleasing, much like most of the games that they have. The music is great. It really fits the style of the game. It's kind of like it's kind of like medieval style uh, that also turns a little bit heavier when you get into fights and boss fights and stuff like that. Um, I I, just, I really don't have any complaints right now. Like I, I don't have any complaints right now about the game. Um, I just, you know, it's hard for me to find time to play Switch games because I mostly, I like playing on console and I don't like using the Switch out of the docking base, I'm, I'm sorry, in the docking base. Like, I, I don't like the feel of the Switch Joy-Cons in my hands when I'm just playing around or even if the, I have a Pro Controller, it doesn't feel the same as like a PS4 or an Xbox controller. So it, it, that kind of turns me off to playing it when it's in docking mode. When I take it out though... When I take it out in handheld mode, damn, I'll, I'll play that thing wherever. I'll walk up and down the stairs. I'll I'll take the dog for a walk. You know, I'm playing on the Switch. Um, taking, a sh taking a shit? Yeah, you know it. <laughs> um, but I, I just, I, all around, I love playing this game. And it may, it may actually make me play the game more when it's in the docked mode, you know? Um, but I really, really enjoy it so far. I'm really, really excited to continue playing it. If you haven't played any of the SteamWorld games, this is a good one to start with. It's a different style than all the other ones, but I would still I would still suggest any of the other SteamWorld games. Even the Tower Defense one has its moments where it's kind of fun. Uh, SteamWorld Dig 1 and 2, of course, are, are gems. They're masterpieces. SteamWorld Heist is a little bit less than SteamWorld Dig, but I still enjoyed the game enough, and I still loved the game. And this game is definitely going above pretty much all the other ones. I think I think SteamWorld 2 might have a bit of an edge right now because it is more you know on hand you get to kind of do what you want to do whereas this one's you know it's of course it's turn based so you can pretty much just pick and choose what you want to do and there's more walking sections where you know you just kind of search for items or you run into enemies and stuff like that. Um, so all in all, uh, my first impressions of SteamWorld Quest are really good. I'm really enjoying the game. It feels so unique to anything else that I've played this year or in a while that is this turnstile turnstile kind of kind of thing that's going on. Um, I really enjoy the, the decks, the cards, and stuff like that. Kind of making making the deck the the way that it needs to be for your play style. So I like to use a lot of a lot of um, the warriors moves myself. Uh, I feel like they hit harder than most of the others, and then when I am using the other ones, I'll use their healing abilities and stuff like that. Like the mage, if you do three of her moves in a row, she'll do a heal. She'll, she'll do an orb of healing, not healing, but protection around all three characters. Or the green robot. I, I don't know. I don't know their names right now. The green dude, he repairs people. So if you do three of his moves in a row, he'll repair everyone for like five or so health and then give them a defense against the next attack that comes to them so it's really interesting really involved and it's really fun and uh, it's really it's really great it's really great so if you haven't played it yet go ahead and play that bitch because it's it's a it's a hit not a miss, I guess they never miss huh? so that brings me to rage 2 and rage 2 just came out it's fresh hot off the presses this week uh, I got it early at the 8 p.m. release at my local GameStop, and so when I was waiting around for the update to load in, I looked at a few reviews online. I usually don't do this. I usually don't do this because then it will make me feel... I don't know. I have this thing where if I read something, I believe it right away, uh, especially with, vid with, with, with with video games. Not anything else, really. But with video games, if I read, you know, that, uh, you know, Super Mario Odyssey is the worst game ever because Mario's, you know, you can see Mario's nipples in one of his outfits. I go, oh, that's going to affect me a little bit. But this time it really didn't. Um, I read the, some Rage 2 reviews, some short reviews. I looked at some of the scorings. And what I've been seeing is mostly positive. Uh, there's eights and sevens, uh, and there was one six that I saw. And for whatever reason, people are coming out and saying, oh, the reviews are bad. Oh, people are reviewing the game bad. It's like, no, this is like, this. these are like, these are, these are like a six, a seven, and eight. That's, that's more than normal. That, that's, that's above average. That's above average for a review. I don't know why people are saying that this game, you know, because the reviews are eight, sevens, and sixes or whatever you want to say, why, like, it, that doesn't mean the game's garbage. Like, if it was garbage, then it would be, like, four, three, two, you know? Maybe even a one. But this, from what I've played of the game, yes, it doesn't run the greatest on console. I've heard bad things about PC right now. I can only I can only talk from a console perspective, and it runs fine. It, I, it feels like a Doom um, in this open-world rage world <laughs> that that was a dumb sentence yummy know I mean? but if it, it feels like a doom kind of game where it's the controls are a little bit more glossy glidey maybe i would say 
Um, that I would, I definitely would suggest turning off the motion blur. The motion blur was giving me a headache even in the first section where I was just turning around and looking because there's a lot of lights and flashing things in this game because it is, it is a lot. It, it's, it feels 80s almost. There's a lot of those kind of um, those those looks on screen and when things pop up on your screen they have like a they fade in with like TV static and stuff like that. It has a really 80s like popping theme to it. Um, there's a few things that the game misses on. Uh, I, f I feel like the game doesn't control as fluidly as I would like to. I feel like there's parts where I'm like, like I I'm going through the game, I'm boosting around, I'm doing this, doing that, you know, having fun. And then all of a sudden there's parts in the game where I'm like, I got to really precisely aim myself because the controls aren't as sweet, sweet, sweet as they, as they looked in the, in the trailers and in the gameplay reveals. Um, I, 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 the other thing I don't like is the voice on the car, the first car you get. I, I just don't like, I, I don't know, it's weird. It's like they tried to make it humorous almost, and I don't feel like that, I, I it's, it's not landing with me right now. Everything that I've been doing hasn't been really been landing with, everything that the car's been saying hasn't been landing with me. Especially, like, I just, recently I had to repair my car, and, like, the car was, like, opening up my hood, baby, and I was like, Shh no no thanks <laughs> stop repairing just let you go the cool thing is though you can pretty much drive any vehicle that you see in the game uh like there was this there's one of the first outposts you go to that has uh one of those vaults in it and there's a car that has like a giant cannon on top and i was like i, I can want to drive this for a little bit so i got into the car and uh, i drove around and it has like this super huge can excuse me super huge cannon and i just shot it once and it obliterated something in front of me i was like okay that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> uh, not to say that the car is weak by any means. The machine gun's great. There's guided missiles on it as well. All that's unlocked from the beginning. The only thing is you need to buy your ammo, though. So you need to kind of you know conserve ammunition until you can get to a place where you can buy ammo. And the first game was like that, too. And I like that about the game because, really, even like... Even in the old days with Vigilante 8 or something like that, I'd be like, wow, you know, these guns only have a limited am amount of ammo in them except for your base gun. That works for me. That makes the game a little bit more challenging. Same thing with this one. Uh, you know, cars shouldn't have unlimited ammunition because, let's face it, they, they, they're they mostly belt fed or whatever whatever you want to call it on, on these games. So it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't would be unlimited. It's kind of like the Division where you have unlimited pistol ammo. It's like, why? Why do I have unlimited pistol ammo? There, there should be a counter on that. I, I don't understand that, but... But I digress. I did enjoy what I played of Rage 2. It's very in your face and very, very fast, quick combat. Um, there's times where you're just kind of walking around listening to someone or it's setting up a scene or, you know, you're, look, you're watching a cut scene or something like that where you start to feel the game drag a little bit, especially during the first mission that you get. There's a lot of like slow down parts where you're just listening to someone at one point the audio cut out while i was listening to a recording and so i had to stand around and listen to nothing for about a minute and a half while the cut like the person finished talking so that the next thing would happen um that was a little disappointing to me especially it's like this is the opening of the game this should be like really you know tight really good because this is your this is your first this is your first hoorah this is getting someone into the game you know other than that i've been, I've been enjoying the game so far it has a lot of great visuals in it the one the another thing that kind of um brings the game down a little bit is the menu the menu takes a, a good amount of time to load up and then once it is loaded it every time you switch panels it takes like a good 30 seconds for it to fully load and then sometimes if you press a button it'll it'll phase out and phase back in and load again i don't know what happened to the menu system in this game but it just is a little bit broken right now so i'm hoping that they'll be able to fix that soonish um but back to the topic of these reviews um the the lowest review that this game got right now is a six out of ten from GameSpot. Uh, and they said that, um, you know, the disappointment is coming from the fact that the, the activities are rudimentary in nature and the decent ones end well before you get your fill. So it seems like this game, like I was fearing, doesn't have enough content to keep it on its feet until the first DLC drop, which is kind of unfortunate. Although I want to play through the game myself. I don't, like I said, I don't usually read reviews until I'm done with a game because I make my own opinions about them. But for 
you know, I've read GameSpot's review and Game Informer's review, of course, and I, I, I tried not to think about that stuff when I went to go play the game, but, you know, when they, when they give you a 14 gig update day one, what am I going to do? I'm going to lay back, I'm going to watch a live stream, I'm going to read some reviews while I'm waiting, and I'm just, you know, it takes like an hour for you to download a 14 gig update on the PS4 for my internet, so I'm just waiting around, watching Chronocide make a Super Mario Maker level, having some fun, and then I got to Rage 2, and by the time that I got to Rage 2, I was already tired, it was, you know, close to 9 30 which is close to my bedtime i usually go to bed around 10 30 <laughs> um and i was just like it was starting to drag for me and i was getting really like my eyes were drooping and i wasn't enjoying the game and i was like you know what i should really get some sleep come back to this the next day play a little bit before the podcast so that i'm refreshed and i'm glad that i did that because once i came back to it it felt a lot more fun a lot it felt a lot more I, I felt like i was at, at in control a little bit better and Besides from the things that I mentioned, I was having a good time with the game. So, all in all, would I suggest you pick this game up if you're a fan of Rage 1? Yes, it plays about the same. It, the, the story goes about the same. The story takes place after the first game. Um, so, if you liked Rage 1, buy this game. If you didn't like Rage 1 or if you never played a Rage game, uh, but you love the Doom style of things, yeah, go ahead, pick up this game. It might, it might, it might, it might, it might, you fancy it might be fancy for you what am i saying i don't know i'm, I'm trying to think of the words but they're not coming out so i i you know i'm causing myself a lot of damage right now um so damage. last thing i want to say about rage 2 like i said the color palette and the things that appear on the screen are really cool um, and the character designs and everything like that are really well done as well. Uh, the different enemy types, like there's one guy who just, he comes at you with like this super hammer and a shield, and you have to use one of your powers to take out his armor in order to kill him a little bit easier. There's also a guy who freaks out and throws like tons of grenades at you, so you can use your dash power, um, nice and effectively there. So they're really incorporating all the moves really well into this game, and the level up trees in the future, I can see some things really helping with, with the way things are going. So, uh, it gets like, um, an end like a almost a thumbs up like i agree with like a seven you know a seven and seven and a half maybe right now uh of course i want to play the game more and i'll probably talk about it more on the weekend as i get through things as well as you know i've been talking about days gone for the past five episodes so why not just start talking about rage 2 as well why not that's all i gotta say about rage for now uh let's move on to some news and the first thing we have today is the super mario maker 2 nintendo direct is going to air today may 15th um, and it's going to be around a 15 minute long video packed with info about the upcoming Mario Maker 2 release. So it's going to be today at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so that means that it will be after this podcast. So if you're not here for this podcast, I don't know where you're at. <laughs> um, but that's a good time for us. British time, though, 11 p.m. Oh, that that might hurt a few people. Uh, but 6 p.m. and 3 p.m. those are good times for America. Um, so yeah, hopefully this will be chocked full of a lot more information. Maybe we'll find out something about maybe like a Luigi mode or something like that. Um, I'm guessing they're gonna show off some more Super Mario 3D World stuff. It's of course not gonna be in 3D, but I'm sure there'll be more stuff for that. And I bet they're gonna show off some maybe some more power ups you can use or something like that to put in the game as well. Um, we've already seen slopes, we've seen moving parada plants, we've seen clear tubes, uh, we've seen the bell upgrade and stuff like that, so what could possibly be next? I don't know, maybe something from Mario Galaxy, maybe something from Mario Odyssey will be, will be appearing. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited, I pre-ordered Super Mario Maker 2 when I picked up Rage 2, so that's done, I got a, a copy of that on order, and I'm excited to play it. So hopefully it's uh, it's good, and uh, hopefully uh, next next podcast, the weekend podcast, uh, I'll be talking about some fantastic things from Super Mario Maker 2, maybe with someone else. Uh, next up, a man in Florida stole a Nintendo Switch on camera and while he was still in his work uniform. <laughs> Only in Florida, I would say. So the Florida man has been censored, has been sentenced uh, to five and a half years in prison after he was caught at the end of 2018 stealing a Nintendo Switch from another man's property in his work uniform. This allowed the Cape Coral police to identify the thief's workplace and track him down. 
Uh, they described the thief as completely stupid, and he was blatantly an idiot. Luckily, the switch has been returned to the family. I'll leave it at that, since I can't talk right now. Um, there have been a few cases of people stealing in, uh, Nintendo pro products in the past. In 2018, a man got his own daughter to hop inside a local mall's arcade machine to retrieve all the Nintendo-themed prizes. So, uh, pff, that's a little bit more interesting than this story, I would say. Um, because those things, like, th they have, like, the wire, like, there's a wire and then you cut the wire or something like that. Whew, okay, well, uh, thank goodness this guy was caught and he's off the streets for now. Hopefully he's learned his lesson. All right, so Mario Kart Wii sold five times as many copies as Mario Kart 8 over the last financial year. I've been talking about Mar uh, Nintendo financial stuff a lot lately because they've been putting out a lot, but this one's a pretty big of a shocker. Despite, despite the game being over 10 years old, Mario Kart Wii has outsold Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and on the Switch. So when comparing the sales of from March 2018 to March 2019, you can see that the Wii U version was drastically undersold. Mario Kart Wii jumped from 37 million units to 37.20 million units, which is 100,000 copies more, and Mario Kart 8 went from 8.42 million to 8.44, which is 20,000 across the same time period. Uh, the Wii was, of course, dropped by Nintendo. It's off their website. They don't really support it anymore. They've taken all the online components down. Uh, but people are obviously still buying games for them. Maybe people who have nostalgia for the Wii are going back and buying games again. Who knows? Uh, or there, maybe there's a new generation of, of kids buying the Wii. They get the Wii and they play with the Wii because it's a fun system for a kid. And they're getting Mario Kart. Who knows? It def the Wii is definitely more accessible to children than the Wii U, I would think. Uh, I don't know about that. If you want to comment in the comment section or tell me, you know, it, do you think that the Wii is more kid-friendly than the Wii U? Let me know your personal thoughts. For me personally, I feel like the Wii U it definitely is not as kid-friendly as the Wii in terms of availability, controls, stuff like that. Let me know. Alright, so some depressing news for fans of Bubsby. Bubsby has been delayed on the Nintendo Switch. It is now arriving late summer instead of its release date that was supposed to be the 16th of May. The limited and physical editions are going to arrive at the end of summer. Uh, the co-founder of the development studio has said the Switch version of Bubsby Pause and Fire is in great shape. We're in the final push on some non-gameplay aspects for the Switch. Um, so... Choice Provisions, who was a developer, were formerly known as Gajin Games, and they were responsible for the Bit Trip series. So this new Bubsy release is a, is going to be a runner-like platforming game for lovers and haters alike. And it includes four playable characters, new moves, collectibles, and a unique combo system, in-game cosmetic shop, not requiring real money, boss battles, and more than 100 levels. So am I going to be getting Bubsby? Well, after the last game, I don't know, because the last game was pretty shit. The 3D game was pretty shit. But hey, you know, Bubsby is... Bubsby's Bubsby. He, is he better than Garfield the Cat? Only the taste of the lasagna will tell you. Don't don't be weird. Don't be weird now, Yemi. Don't be weird, dude. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Alright, so Netflix will be hosting its own panel at E3 2019 about developing original series into video games. So, if you remember, uh, Stranger Things, the video game, was announced for multiple platforms, including Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox, and now, to top it off, the streaming giant has revealed that it will now be doing a presentation at E3 over Twitter. Netflix will be hosting a panel titled Bringing Your Favorite Shows to Life, which apparently focuses on turning original series into video games. So, uh, they tweeted on Twitter the other day, heard the latest E3 Coliseum excitement, Come here from the team at Netflix on their panel at E3. Information here at E3Expo.com. So a lot of fans are wondering what Netflix originals will be being made into games. Maybe Daredevil. Maybe uh, Iron Fist. Maybe Luke Cage. So those are some Marvel ones. What about originals? What about Netflix originals? Well, there's Lucifer. Uh, there's... Um, Disenchanted, that's a one that I really like. It's an animated show by the same guys who did Futurama. Uh, 
I can't think of any more right now off the top of my head. Uh, maybe a dark tourist, huh? Maybe maybe you can go to different tourist locations. I don't know. They've been kind of going into the gaming field a little bit with their more cho- choice driven game uh, movies. Um, with their like, there was the Black Mirror one where you could kind of control, you know, what happens on the screen. There's also one with Bear Grylls. Uh, and his it's like you versus nature or something like that. You can kind of choose what he does. Um, those things are interesting. Uh, they they are reminiscent of the older games that you would play where you kind of had a choice and whatever happens, you would kind of splinter into different things. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so Discord, they're wanting to be on the Switch, but they came out and said that Nintendo needs to bless them. Just like, just like Papa Ferret blessed the podcast, Nintendo needs to bless the Discord app on the Switch. So the makers of the Discord app tweeted out the, on Mother's Day a picture of the... Um, characters from Animal Crossing uh, hugging their mother, and then someone commented saying "Discord for Switch when" with a with a little uh, thinking emoji, and Discord responded to them saying, "We would love to bring Discord to the Switch, but we'd need Nintendo's blessing for that to happen first. Vote up the idea here, and maybe it'll, it'll be a thing someday." So they have a, a a link for where you can tell Nintendo that you want discord on the switch what would this mean what would this be maybe it would be like an in-app feature for you to chat with friends um you know invite people to voice chats on the switch who knows um this would be an interesting feature and i'm sure it would be a free thing as well since it's on free on all other devices as well um they've apparently been wanting to get the Dis- discord app on switch since 2017 when it was released uh we'll see what happens though if you want to you can go to discord's twitter and find that link um all right, so the creator of Super Monkey Ball has no idea why the game got so popular. In a um, in an interview with Fam Itsu, which is a Japanese gaming website, so it's been translated. Um, the sales for the game were disappointing in Japan, but were su- surprisingly well received in uh, the U- U.S. and abroad. Personally, I wanted to gain experience by making Super Monkey Ball, he says, uh, but it didn't sell well locally. But then it took off overseas. Still, honestly, I don't know why it sold so well. In the midst of that, Sega's president called and praised me, saying, you really took the overseas market into account. And of course he said yes and laughed. Uh, So this is kind of funny. The guy, apparently the creator didn't know that it was going to be such a big hit overseas. He thought it was going to be like a local thing. But hey, you know, it worked out well for them. And there is a possibility that Super Monkey Ball will be coming back because Nintendo has filed a patent for... Uh, monkey super monkey ball so maybe possibly it will be coming back who knows um we'll have to wait and see so fans of the ghostbusters video game could be hearing about a remaster coming to ps4 and xbox soon if you don't know ghostbusters the video game was a tie into the movies in 2009 that was fantastic it really incorporated every element of the ghostbusters series that you've come to know and love on a taiwanese rating site there was a rating for Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered, and it suggested that it will come to the Xbox One because that was the only one that was listed, but of course, it'll probably come to the PS4 as well if it is remastered. The game is already backwards compatible on Microsoft, uh, on Xbox, I'm sorry, uh, so this might be a misunderstanding of some kind, but people are hoping that, hey, maybe it is a remaster coming to Nintendo, I mean, I'm sorry... <laughs> People are saying, hey, maybe this is a remaster coming to the next generation or this generation of consoles. I'd be excited for it. I liked this game back in the day. I played it myself recently back in like 2015 on my old PC, and I never reinstalled it on this one. Uh, So I'd I'd be excited for that because it it was a really good, well-done video game with lots of comedy and good gameplay. Okay, so Devolver Digital has scheduled its E3 2019 press conference, and we'll see what they're going to do this year. Um, They've been... They've been one for these big but short E3 press conferences with a lot of craziness happening in them. Uh, They said that the E3 press conference will be on Sunday, June 9th at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, which will be about 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 
and even later, British time. Uh, if you don't know, Devolver Digital was the same people who did the press conference where the lady came out and just ripped limbs off of people and was bleeding from the nose and the mouth and passed out at the end of it. Uh, they also, they, they've just done crazy, crazy, crazy E3 presentations, so they'll probably have to live up to the hype for this one. We'll see, they'll probably be talking about that My Friend Pedro game, and maybe some other things will be shown off as well, uh, but my bet, my best guess is that Pedro... Pedro game is going to be showcased here and will be releasing this year. All right, Anthem news. Everyone loves Anthem news. Yay! Anthem failed to meet expectations despite digital sales being good, says EA. So EA, of course, is more EA bullshit. They've come out and said that it didn't sell as well physically that we wanted to, and uh, you can tell by the uh, restart, restart. Anthem sales failed to meet expectations, says EA, despite the record digital performance. Oh, everyone loves it when I talk about Anthem, right? Yes, we love Anthem, says everyone. No one's saying that, Yemi. So, Anthem did not perform as well physically as the company hoped so, but despite all that, the game is one of the best-selling digital games ever, with more than 75% of its profits coming from digital sales across consoles. Uh, with regards to the game itself, EA came out and said that we continue to events, invest heavily in Anthem with developers working on game quality content systems and game mechanics. It's a great original IP and we've doubled down on this product. Except, except, they fucking took create Bioware staff away from the game. They can't come out and say this bullshit when they literally last week took assets away from Anthem's development and from the update team, and they took it to, and put it on the Dragon's Age 4. They can't say shit like this. We are investing so much in Anthem. You can't say that when literally you are taking people away to, to help Anthem begin be, be, try to become a competent game, and you're taking people away from that to put on Dragon's Age 4, which is probably going to be another steaming pile of shit. What are they doing? They're just coming out and lying to us. Literally lying to us right now. Because, like I said, they don't support this game as much as they're saying right now. They've taken people away from the game. You can't say that we're, we, oh, it's a great original IP and we've doubled down on the project. No, you've taken, you've, you're not doubling down, you're negatively down. I don't know what to say. It, it, and, and obviously it's not that great of an original IP. It has horrible ratings. It has not good physical sales. Sure, the digital sales are off the wall. Whatever, digital sales are whatever because there's sales involved in that. Don't forget about 50% off. There was, there was a 50 fucking percent off like months after the game was released. That's where most of your sales are probably coming from. <laughs> This is not a good game. I don't know why they're bullshitting everyone with this. The game is just mediocre. It is just... It's not really well done. And yet they come out and say that they're it's a great game and that we're doubling down on this project. Bullshit. Next year... Bioware is going to be shut down, and we're all going to look back and laugh at this. We're all going to laugh, ho, 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 because you know what? I saw this coming. You probably can see this coming, and by golly, I bet the staff of Bioware can see it coming as well. EA, I give you a big... Boo, you stink! Because you stink, you stupid noob! And finally, for today, I didn't really want to talk about this, but I kind of have to since it is gaming news uh the youtuber sensation with who recently hit a million subscribers was just outed for cheating on his wife he's getting a divorce it's pro jared everyone uh, everyone's favorite uh what's he even do on youtube i don't even know I, I don't follow his channel i still don't follow his channel of course but this is pretty big news pro jared who uh, is a YouTuber who makes videos about gaming and stuff like that. He hasn't really posted on YouTube much in this recent months. It was four months ago he did his last video, and before that it was like 10, 11 months ago. Um, as for Twitter, he hasn't come out and said anything since his tweet about his divorce. After he blocked his wife on Twitter, things kind of blew up in his face. The girl he was cheating on his wife with was outed by his ex-wife. Um, and then a whole bunch of stuff has come out about him, uh, showing his, uh, his penis to underage fans of the channel, uh, and, uh, also his 
nudes have been leaked online. Uh, so now, if you want to, you can see Pro Jared's poops. <laughs> the funny thing, though, is that this guy was one of the, the, the people who really shat on John Tron, and there was another guy who was caught yanking it on live stream on accident. He accidentally left his webcam on, and he was still streaming. It was a dumb idea. Uh, you know, whatever. It, it, I don't... <laughs> but he was one of those guys who came out and really, really gave them the business. And then now... The tables have turned. He's been kicked out of the Normal Boots group, and Game Grups has totally axed him from their website. He's lost a lot of sponsors and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a tough time for him, and, you know, he's probably deserved it. He's, he deserves it, of course. It does sort of pertain to video games, since he is a video game YouTuber, and he he did recently reach a million subscribers, but unfortunately, he can't... Uh, he can't get that play button because guess what? He's down to like eight eight hundred twenty two thousand now. We'll see what happens with this though. And that about wraps it up for this episode of YemiCast, a video game podcast. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and talking with me, having fun with me here on the podcast. If you're here for the premiere, thank you for sticking around and having and talking with me in the chat. It's been a pleasure. Um, as usual, the podcast premieres on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and also on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time as well. So if you want to, you can join me at, on those days and talk with me while the premiere is happening. The podcast is available on all other platforms the same day, so don't worry about you Spotifyers, SoundClouders, or iTuners. Uh, you'll get your podcast fix the same day. Uh, other than that, live streams are still going great. Uh, we're going to start a new game this weekend, so tune in for that. Ooh, what could it be? Uh, and also, don't forget about the Nintendo Direct coming up today, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. If you want to check that out, if you're if you're a fan of Mario Maker 2, or I'm, I'm sorry, Mario Maker, you definitely don't want to miss this one. So if your mother's cooking dinner and she's like, hey, come down for dinner, you got to be like, mom, no, there's a Nintendo Direct talking about Super Mario Maker. I'll get it later. And she's like, but you gotta come down and eat with the family. You can just be like, shut up, mom. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it for me for this episode. Um, thank you so much once again. I am your host, Yemi the Ferret. And this has been another episode of Yemi Cast, a video game podcast. Mm-hmm.